Now I don't have the uh, ambition to, to conclude the symposium because uh, as I'm uh, listening to you, I'm at uh, the, the depth of my ignorance, but we try to understand. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to thank uh, the chair of the Senate, President Larcher. It is a good thing that the Senate can play its role, where we, a place where we can debate issues in total freedom without having to uh, bow to outside pressure. I'd like to come back to your uh, question, and it enables me to give uh, you a personal testimony. <clears throat> Under the watchful, watchful eyes of uh, former uh, military commanders and Michel Roussin, we had uh, two very different problems uh, on uh, the uh, place, uh, the position of France in the world. The first problem <coughs> is uh, probably the most uh, immediate, is that the institutions of the Fifth Republic uh, and since the five-year term uh, was instituted, it means that uh, the French president has uh, a lot of power. That was not what had been planned by General de Gaulle in 1958. In 1962, he, he modified uh, the balance of powers with the president being directly elected by the French people. But the five-year term means that uh, the uh, president of France, whether he likes it or not, has a very central position which uh, I feel personally, I mean, you might not share my uh, opinion, but it is an overwhelming, <clears throat> overwhelming role because the French president needs to be competent on the coronavirus, on the consequences, on uh, the uh, economy, uh, the consequences for Europe, and then jump to local policies, international politics, military pol policies, and it is a pyramid which is based on the president. <clears throat> the French president is a young man. He, is, uh, um, he has a lot of energy. He has huge qualities. He is not that used to political life, to electoral life, and he is not that used to uh, international relations. Uh, I have uh, spent a long time in Parliament, so it's my fifth or sixth uh, president of the Republic. And he, the, the present uh, president does not have the experience that uh, François Mitterrand had. <clears throat> he, do, he does not have the same determination as uh, President Giscard d'Estaing faced with Congo. Until now, he hasn't had the same uh, know-how as uh, President Chirac, uh, who managed uh, not to, to be on good terms. He managed to be on good terms with uh, everybody while still moving forward. I served as a defense minister to Nicolas Sarkozy. He was a president who uh, uh, had a five-year term, and he, had, uh, he wasn't really available, because you need to have time for, your, uh, uh, for the people you talk to, especially in your countries in Africa, who are very attached to personal relations, uh, full of subtlety, and uh, you, you uh, use our language, which is also your language. I was listening to Charles Onana, uh, and it was a real pleasure because there was truth in uh, uh, every uh, sentence. There were torpedoes coming right under the right under the waterline, which uh, which uh, exploded the ammunition the dump first time around. So the first problem is that the French president <coughs> has a number of issues to deal with, and the problem is you don't uh, have any, <coughs> you don't vote in, uh, in French presidential elections. If you did, then you would be uh, taken more seriously. Then we want a long-term partnership, especially with French-speaking Africa. 
But mechanically, you don't have the right speaking partner. And uh, Madam, you asked the right uh, question. You asked whether uh, decisions were made in the Senate or in the French Assembly of deputies. It doesn't. Uh, and it's in neither place. Now, you do have allies. You do have uh, uh, elected uh, uh, people. I think we really have to build a uh, policy for the French-speaking world, uh, defense policy. But uh, decisions on foreign policy are taken elsewhere. And your, uh, your politicians know that full well, because they go straight to the president and to the uh, presidential cabinet, whereas you would have to <coughs> call upon um, elected officials who will have trouble in lending you their ear, because you don't, have, uh, uh, you don't elect them. Their first concern is towards their own electors, the people who vote for them. But we have a political system which deprives you of somebody who is available to listen to you and who can manage the immense, immense complexity of the problems that were raised. <clears throat> I listened to the uh, person uh, from uh, Quebec. I'm sorry, I didn't understand everything you were saying because it's really complicated, horribly complicated. And the president will become uh, cautious and why? Because if, uh, if he takes one position, then there's an expert from the opposing point of view who's going to mobilize uh, the press, the media in France. <clears throat> and we have uh, 8 uh, to 10 uh, uh, television channels who are uh, um, um, uh, information channels so, or news channels. So and if you answer a question in a poorly worded answer, then you're going to launch, there's going to be a crisis and very little satisfaction. That is why the president of the French Republic, uh, he doesn't have the time. He isn't available enough. The politicians who could advise him are just not listened to, whereas they be in his camp or not. So we have a first weakness. And if we want to stick to our international responsibility, then we have to ask the question about the, how we want to organize uh, the French political presence at, at international level. Uh, Europeans are on the same uh, uh, scale as you. I come uh, from uh, the east of uh, France, and uh, the uh, Germans are important for my region. I was uh, talking and had lunch with Martin uh, Schulz, who was a German, who chaired the European Parliament. And I realized that we ignored one another, whereas Germany is a neighboring country. We have, uh, uh, we uh, make up 50 percent of the European GDP, but we don't know uh, the uh, political parties in Germany and vice versa. So when uh, Ghana chooses French as a second language, I'm uh, very happy. I know what that means, but for a number of of uh, compatriots uh, doesn't, don't really know where Ghana is on a map between the Ivory Coast and Togo. First problem. Second problem, uh, which is much more serious, because that's the problem of internal organization. The um, second problem, which is much more serious, somebody was uh, uh, mentioning the period of the Cold War. It was a very difficult period for uh, hundreds of millions of people who are on the wrong side of the wall. Now we have a totally open system. We don't have a real enemy. We only have competitors. So France is faced with a competitive environment. So are you, but we have become aware of that. And I, I knew France before globalization. It was closed. 
uh, foreign investment was heavily controlled. The state was as poorly managed as today, but the difference was that they could devalue the currency every five to ten years. So savers were on the wrong end of the mistakes of uh, the uh, of uh, the government. But the government could govern because they weren't in a situation of competition, which means now that they have to achieve results. So now there is a concentration of uh, capitals, of uh, uh, people. There is a selfishness of each major country utilitarianism and selfishness, egoism, because that is where the battle is being fought in our own country. And we're not sure that we have all human elements necessary to win the war in terms of skills, uh, technicity, sciences, technology, etc. And international action requires time. It requires people who are dedicated to it, people who are uh, sufficiently skilled to bring th something to the table and sufficiently modest and empathetic to uh, to create links. So we have more and more difficult to find them. I know French companies who work abroad, <coughs> fortunately, they work with foreign nationals abroad. So, uh, uh, we, but we don't have the people available, uh, companies to find them. But at the local level, it's their locals, and that's a very good thing. That's the only solution. But when the state wants to help advise or carry out uh, security operations, for example, the military operations, uh, all very well. Uh, but uh, military people have uh, wives, uh, children. They don't work a 30, uh, 35 hours. A week. So to, ha to send one soldier abroad, you need five, because some are in training, some are, some are in preparation, some are on leave, uh, and also logistical uh, issues. So our country, uh, and I say that although I don't have the solution. So when you talk about the 90 million uh, uh, inhabitants of uh, of the Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, I'm terrified because if we really wanted to work together, we that would uh, take up all our technical operational capabilities uh, with the uh, second or third uh, river in the world, the Congo River. You can do what you like if you don't have uh, enough capital, enough uh, people. I think uh, money, capital is easier to find than quality people who accept, who agree to play that role. And, why did I sponsor this symposium? Well, as I said this morning, for strong personal reasons. When we send young people to take risks, when they uh, um, become older and when they start having issues, you have to remain by their side. But the second reason I agreed is that all opportunities to uh, talk things over with French speakers, African French speakers, are a good thing to go into depth into the issues, even if or even or just because there are divergences. But I see that nowadays in my country, uh, they, we are afraid, we are selfish. And that is because there is a, a stronger uh, a competition. And there is a tired expression of democracy, because to have talents in generous missions, you need generous families. And when you have, uh, when you have uh, uh, um, uh, smaller ungenerous families, then you have ungenerous uh, uh, mission support. Those are my personal con uh, convictions. And as a conclusion, I would like to thank the organizers of, of the uh, symposium and in, in this uh, difficult uh, media landscape and uh, surprising media landscape with that uh, 
with that uh, um, with that uh, country of 12 million people uh, with a president who does not correspond to what was decided in La Boule. It is surprising that they have so much support in the media. But you give me the wish to uh, explore why there is so much hosp hostility vis-à-vis that uh, free and fair debate. And I think there's just one answer. There are some people who uh, adore, to to adore self-flagellation, self-criticism. I will never be part of those.